Mr. Kennedy had a very gentle way of provoking the best, getting the best out of us. Uh, he carried himself at all times like a gentleman, no matter what. I've only seen his feathers ruffled a couple of times, and even in that, he was very low-keyed and controlled. Um, he could bring out a special blend in the singers. Um, we had a, a really tight bond. I can't really explain it, but you felt him. Uh, at, when you stood before him, you felt his energy, and you knew just what to do, just by a look. Um, and so I, I cannot deny that my experience here at Fisk University has been profound, and uh, I carry that with me wherever I go. My Lord, my Lord, I'm the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready for the judgment day. My Lord, my Lord, are you ready, my brother? Oh, yeah. Are you ready for the judgment? Oh, yeah. Do you want to see Jesus? Oh, yes, I'm waiting for the chariot because I'm ready to go. Are you ready, my sister? Oh, yeah. In 1971, Matthew Kennedy directed the Fisk Jubilee Singers in their 100th anniversary celebration concert at the War Memorial Auditorium in Nashville. That same year, concerts were presented at the Kennedy Center and New York's Carnegie Hall. Please allow me to congratulate you most sincerely on the outstanding success of your recent appearance under the leadership of your most able director, Matthew Kennedy. I anxiously await the opportunity to hear and meet you. Very best wishes for your continued success, Marian Anderson. In spite of tremendous advancement in the African-American community since the days of slavery, as late as the 1970s, the city of Nashville was still bitterly segregated. Fisk University and Meharry Medical Center College were located in what became one of Nashville's poor black ghettos. The railroad tracks to Union Station ran right through the community, creating dead-end streets and unsafe neighborhoods. They intersected the main street 
leading to the emergency room at Nashville's Colored Hospital, meaning ambulances were often stuck in traffic blocked by railroad freight cars. Countless lives were lost. But in 1981, the Fisk Jubilee Singers Memorial Bridge was constructed across the railroad tracks. Mr. Kennedy had come out of retirement to direct the Jubilee Singers. As we got through our travels, it became clear that proper provisions were not made. And um, Mr. Kennedy reached into his wallet and he paid for us to, con to continue the tour and to actually finish it so that um, the university benefited, the people who wanted us benefited. Um, we benefited because we had such a demonstration of character in supporting those things which you love and hold dear. All of those, those things that I learned about Mr. Kennedy just in that short period of time stayed with me in that um, we have to support the things that we say that we love. And, and sometimes we have to do that in a very tangible way that is a sacrifice. Um, the other thing that just stands out to me about him is that he, because he's a quiet person, a lot of times people don't recognize his strength. And it takes a lot more strength sometimes to be quiet than to have a loud, aggressive outburst. And that's something that can only be learned, having to endure hardship, having to endure discrimination, having to prove that, that you're more than is what ex is expected of you. And, and that um, is something that stayed with me. It's something that I've imparted into my daughter is that we have to stand, we have to be who God told us that we are. Most of these people that you see in the painting had been slaves, just one or two of them were free, but for the rest of them, being enslaved was so close to them, and uh, they could sing these sorrow songs with great emotion and great feeling because they were so close to slavery. And for their ancestors, being enslaved and the constant hope for a better way of life, for freedom, was something that was so close to all of these young people. Have you thought about your grandfather's slavery? I had not given too much thought to it because I did not have conversation with those who might have been close to him. And he did not leave any records of what his feelings were. So I did not have any first-hand uh, acquaintance with my grandfather's life. And what is the personal meaning for you? What, what do these words say for you personally? The message is there uh, for the constant yearning for a better life. Constant yearning for complete freedom Do you feel you've attained complete freedom? No, I don't believe I have. 